Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our match preview. I'm obviously playing Bulgaria in a friendly on Tuesday and I'm joined by Gary Spain once again and John Kerr from the subreddit or Koi Big. Big. Uh, make sure you check it out if you're on Reddit. If you're not, you'll see a link in the bio. But uh, uh, let's talk about Bulgaria. They're, they're uh, FIFA ranking. They're in 60th in the FIFA ranking or 35th. Um, not that I read too much into the FIFA rankings. I, I don't either. Um, if you read the rugby rankings, we're the best rugby country in the world, and that's a load of Damn rubbish. Damn right we are. Damn right we are. <laughs> well, stick to uh, the football. Well, we stick to the football, and I don't hold... I think Belgium were number one in the FIFA rankings, and uh, I think they are anyway. And I, yeah, one or uh, two. Yeah, I, yeah I, I don't... I, uh, Belgium were... Don't get me wrong, Belgium were a class side, and they're going to walk their group. But, I don't think Switzerland yeah. are necessarily a top ten in the world side. Uh, no, from the way no. they played uh, the other night, but well, I do think they are the still, still, still uh, missing players too. Just, to, just the matters. Then, obviously, we've we've this friendly uh, that it's kind of, I think it's more so a, a case to maybe blood in new players, which we'll we'll get to kind of our eleven that we want to see. We're gonna have to agree on that between ourselves. But just okay. in regards, they just got beaten by England four 0 It seemed like a fairly straightforward result. Nobody in their team, you know strikes my eye and says wow what a player or yeah, strikes fear into me is there anyone no, that... when I was when I was thinking of the Bulgaria uh, uh, about this match before today I was thinking about the last time I we played them uh, to my memory which was the 2010 qualifying stage and that was a team that had the Petrovs that had Berbatov, Berbatov. Yeah. they were a dangerous side they're not they don't have those kind of big names that they did anymore um, and watching that game against England they do look quite shaky at the back so I w- now, I'm not saying that we're going to have a attacking masterclass. Yeah. Fingers crossed now, but I wouldn't be too confident. I do think that they're probably there's a goal or two in that in that game for us. I think if we yeah, I mean I, th- I think that was the first game in quite a while they haven't scored, but they've also conceded quite a lot. I mean Kosovo put three past them in in Sofia. Um, no, I appreciate Kosovo are a lot better than <laughs> than maybe people imagine for yeah. a bottom seed, but still. Um, they were they were they were beaten three two at home by Kosovo. I mean England beat them four 0 and I think England have been criticised for the performance. So <laughs> I don't know what what it says about um, Bulgaria or about England, but yeah they, they they do concede a lot of goals. I, I don't know what Bulgaria team we're going to see in Tuesday night. I mean we're going to be talking about our team, but they yeah, may that's... well try out try out some players as well. They they are more or less out. I think of the, I think they are effectively out qualification contention however they they are likely I, I think I've seen a UEFA thing on the playoffs they are likely as it stands to to get a playoff and I, I think I agree they will probably end up in a, a league C or possibly a higher playoff so they'll probably use this game and their future qualifiers to experiment a bit and try and get things right for March and still reach the finals. Well, from what I understand, uh, they're trying a bit more of a pass, a building from the back approach. Uh, I think that was that's what led to their uh, England's first goal the other night was the, the, when their, the goalkeeper was passing the centre-back and I think then they got mixed up or they lacked confidence or whatever and Sterling won it and passed okay. to Kane for the, for the opener. But uh, they, I think that that would benefit us going into this game because I think they are still quite raw in terms of the new style that they're trying to implement, and I think that could benefit us. I, I think so. Well, I think that I think that resonates a little bit with us because we're ultimately kind of in a transitional period ourselves, albeit we're not blooding in players. But I think we will be trying to blood in players for this game. We will stick with the tried and trusted. I think for it for the re- that the remainder of our games, I think that's gonna happen. But from a playing point of view, like we at the moment we are trying to play a different uh, way. We're gonna be ultimately bringing a manager too, so we're kind of. I wouldn't say as much as a transitional period as them, but we are in a bit of a transitional yeah. period. A lot of players that are in the squad now, um, you know, weren't there two, three, two, three years ago. Okay. I mean, you know, like it's your two thousand sixteen. It's 2019 now. Like Shane Duffy was only starting to really get his name. Uh, get his, yeah, he only his broke chance. in. He only yeah. broke in during the Euros. So there's players and, yeah. there. Uh, yeah. Howerton's only really got his chance under mix. There's a lot of players there that are only starting to get their chance, I suppose, Robinson, at international level. Judge. Yeah, McGoldrick as well. Yeah. You know, um, I, I think we may use this game, though, more to try the players who are on the bench and just yes. outside the first team. Or see if they have the... The, the nows to play yeah, I, yeah but as opposed to blood in the under 21s who have a crucial game oh, yeah, in Sweden yeah, and Tuesday night as well so I, th- I yeah. think we'll probably talk about this more in the other video but um, I think definitely 
Glenn Whelan's successor needs to be identified because he's he's on the way out. And I, I think, think I know who that is. Well, well, for Tuesday, I think it has to be Josh Cullen. But we we will remember away, we, Gary. Remember, <laughs> well, spoilers. God well, we can argue this in a second. But but remember, we also have James McCarthy and Harry Arthur who are not available for Tuesday. Who would certainly be in strong contention? Uh, certainly, would oh, be ahead yeah. of him in the pecking order? Uh, not ahead of Whelan, ahead of Josh. Ahead of Josh. Well, as if now, obviously, yeah. but maybe not in a few days' yeah. time. I think if Josh time, quits yeah. himself well in this game, that could, he could throw himself into the mix. Yeah, uh, well, he's I think playing he's, he's, he's playing for... Bed, it'll put to bed that argument with the, 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 the Declan Royce thing. Well, well, you know, <laughs> not to I really want to bring him up, but who? it's just yeah. a constant, it's just a constant thing that you always hear. I had I had someone on the, on the subreddit comment the other day saying, "Oh, I, I think Troy Parrott's going to do it." Yeah, like, he's from Dublin. He's from Dublin. <laughs> I anyway. think I, I don't blame us for for being. We, I think we have the fear God put into us after that. I don't actually. Situation. I don't care. I actually don't care. I have this <laughs> belief that you know you either want to play for Ireland, you don't. If you don't, good luck. I'm, I'm very much like James McLean in that aspect. If you don't want to play for Ireland, sort off. It's not. A, it's not a place for tryouts. Speaking of, I think and now he's obviously committed to us. Um, but just while we are kind of talking about that defensive midfield position, uh, Harry Arder's pulled out of a lot of squads recently. Uh, I think we didn't he he pulled out of our squad citing an injury and then played the full ninety minutes for Fulham. Yeah, he said he needed an operation and then yeah, then did, yeah. did play for Fulham. I, but, and I, um, I do think commitment yeah. is an important factor in deciding who's playing in our team. And I think that if Cullen's turning up on the bench for every game that that should be warranted in the conversation. I, I well. think we'll see who's available in October maybe yeah. and uh yeah, well, you were yeah. going to say something about Cullen there. So he's been started well for for Charlton. I've he, watched him. Yeah, I mean, well, Charlton were expected to get relegated straight back down to League One. They've made a fantastic start. They're challenging for promotion to the Premier League. Uh, Josh is playing for them. No, I must admit, I haven't. I, I've seen Josh play in in underage, so I've actually somebody I liked, and uh, but I, I haven't seen him with Charlton this season. But the fact that he's playing regularly and playing. In a in a successful, a very successful Charlton side, has got to be a positive. Oh, and we don't have that many people playing in successful teams, in successful in, uh, in the Championship or in the Premier League. I think psychologically, it had taught, we talked in the the previous video about self belief, and I think definitely when you have players who are playing in winning teams, it gives you that extra impetus. It gives you that bravery to try out something that you might not do if you're playing in a less successful team as well so that's definitely got to be taken into account yeah no yeah. I mean obviously I'd have Glenn Whelan starting in Tbilisi and hopefully that's what we were saying it's like it's it's going to be the tried and trusted for the remainder of the campaign but this is a good get a good chance to look at um, different options. options that might yeah. that, that can handle it at international level now obviously we all know from the the Poland game where O'Brien scored, it's going to be played at a, sm- at a slower p- pace, I think, than a than a qualifier. A qualifier. You know, really, it's not yeah. going to be as you know gung ho. You'd want to be hoping that there's no serious injuries happen as well. Yeah. Players can go back to their clubs healthy enough. I know we've got to two keep injuries. Up their form. Two injuries with Robinson and McGoal. So uh, uh, the new striker's going to have to come in there either way. But it was and it was the or... smart move to send them back to the clubs. We have to oh, be yeah. we have to be consistent. Uh, oh, sorry, um, cognizant of. Clubs the relationship, needs, the yeah. club needs, oh, yeah. and the relationship with the clubs. I mean, it is a friendly on a Tuesday. They have big games at the weekend, so yeah. I think if someone needs, I mean, I think the most you'd see out of someone like Shane Duffy, maybe forty-five minutes, if if at all, because yeah. it's important that players don't go back to their clubs crocked. absolutely wrecked, crocked, or even wrecked on a having played two big games. So. It is one for me for the players who, as I said already, and I don't want to be keep repeating myself, but the guys who are just on the fringes knocking of the, the team, knocking on the, on the cusp, door. Yeah. This is your chance. There's your 70 or maybe hopefully 90 minutes mm. and to, to prove you're worth, worth a starting place or if if the person ahead of you gets injured, to that jump you into can that jump starting in. 11. Yeah. And I, I think that that is probably one of the reasons that we've played such a familiar starting 11 is because we don't really have players with serious international experience coming off the bench. I think uh, Odauda uh, is probably one of our most senior internationals that isn't in the starting XI. I yeah. think he's only been a part of the squad for about two years and has masked something like 15 to 20 caps. So I think this is an opportunity to get players playing at, at international level and get getting them those ninety minutes that'll equip them if they need to jump in for the yeah for the game because we we have three really tough games coming up yes so. well and we have a friendly in between against New Zealand which will <laughs> also give people a chance but on Tuesday night yeah it is a chance to get international experience yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. well let's talk about their last 
Seven games. So they drew with Cyprus one one all. They drew with uh, Slovenia one all. They drew with Montenegro one all. Then they drew with Kosovo one all. Then they drew or they lost two one to Czech Republic. Then they lost three two to um Kosovo and they lost four 0 to England. So that's when their their last so, was there's no there's no they have no wins in seven games. And to be, seven, fair, to, to be fair to us, seven. I think that they're a lot of their opposition are teams that we have either beaten or played quite well against in the recent past. So yeah. I, I do think that we are a level above them going into this game. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to read too much into the game because they are likely, I imagine, to make quite a few changes. And I think we obviously will as well. So I, I'd be more interested and I think it's probably more important to, to see, to pick out a few individual performances as opposed to to winning the game, although it, it's always nice to win and it'll breed confidence. I, I would, I haven't said that. I still wouldn't like to lose. Mm. Well, no, well, I yeah. think squad momentum is vital. Yeah. I think the the like we were saying previously, the energy after McGoldrick scored was fantastic, and if we can bring that something like resembling that energy into the Georgia game, that'll be massively psychologically effective in terms of. How well, we I think we've got. I think we're going to have that energy. I mean. The attendance is on Tuesday night is going to be nothing like the attendance on, on last Thursday. Well, I do think it's a chance think, for, yeah. for, for a more feel-good factor going into yeah. to the, to the other games. You know, if we see someone, someone I don't know, James Collins or someone like that has a really good performance, it kind of gives someone there. Because I remember when uh, when, when you, you just mentioned Odeuda, you know, against Poland. You know, people were going, oh, this fella's really good. You know, I'd like to see him do more. You know, they want to see him. O'Brien. Then O'Brien got a bit of a chance then. He was getting, you know, yeah. I know it was a couple of friendlies and stuff, but he was getting a chance in there as a striking role with Robinson and stuff like that. So it was a chance to see other people. And people were getting excited about new faces and stuff like that. So I think this is a chance. If someone has a really mm. good performance, Josh Cullen, whoever. Yeah. Um, Even for the likes of if Hendrick, or one of our starting players, it's a chance for them to get a bit more confidence. If, if Harrahan nabs a goal or two, on, on Tuesday if, if Hendrick nabs a goal that'll massively add to their confidence for the rest of the campaign yeah. mm-hmm. talking about new faces I think it is a massive pity that the under 21 fixtures are around the same time because I think that there's a lot of excitement for what Stephen Kenny's doing at the moment I remember thinking the forward line that they have for their squad so Adam Ida, Troy Parra Aaron Connolly Michael Obafemi, Michael Obafemi. <laughs> yeah. With the, the I, I think that is and more, Johnny and yeah, Johnny, Johnny. Yeah. I, I think okay. that that's more exciting, excited that uh, than any forward line I've seen for the Republic for quite some time. So it's a pity that they won't be available to call up. Well, I do, I do think from watching. I know you were at the game the other night. I don't think that Troy Parrott's ready for no. top level international football. Yes, he will be. Absolutely, I, he will be. Fingers crossed. Yeah. He absolutely will be. Um, but from watching him the other night. Um, you know, there was a decent crowd there in Tallis Stadium. It wasn't full up. It wasn't, you know, the Aviva. I was disappointed with the crowd, to be honest. If three thousand four hundred, given all the hype that's been about. Yeah, but that, the, the, that's the like, problem is there was yeah. League of Ireland games on that night too. No, nothing well. in Dublin. The Ireland game. Yeah, but nothing in Dublin. But there still yeah. was, like, you know. Yeah, um, but it was a five. It was free in the season ticket. It was a mm. five. Or if you didn't have a season ticket, I mean, I think kids were free. yeah, kids were free actually. Yeah, well, I think people from Dundalk would come down. Like people from Cork would have came down to probably watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but still, with nothing in Dublin, I thought it was a great, um, a great. I, I was, I was expecting over five thousand. I think at at the same yeah. time, I think that we, well, we shouldn't be too critical of the fans. I think that it, it's fair to say that the under twenty one side is this is the most excitement it's had around it in years, and I think that the fact that we have more fans going to the game now is isn't something to be sniffed at. Oh well, no, no, it's even, great to even see. Even though there people, could be more, yeah. I think we should be happy with the attendance that it did no, get. Well, I, I wasn't being critical of the fans. Mm. I was just meaning more so. I just don't, I think. Troy Parrott doing well, but I just think he, he might he might struggle against. He's playing against under twenty one players who aren't fully developed. I know he played at the games of the summer again against Juventus and Real Madrid and I think Arsenal as well. Bayern Munich, United. Um, yeah, so he's, he's well. played against a lot of top teams. Great experience for him, but I think to throw him into a thing at this age now, I thought beforehand. This was before I watched him live. Um, that he what he would have been ready. He seemed like nothing phases him, and he seems like a, a really level headed lad. I spoke to him after the under twenty ones game, and you know he 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 told me he was ready if 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 needed to play. But I just don't think that um it's the right time. I think no. I, just just the other thing to remember is Troy Parrott was eligible for the under seventeens that we hosted yeah. in May. So no, yeah. he's already playing, probably playing under twenty one too soon. Is, 
a, a two or three years to so yeah and he's he's certainly not out of place he's already been talked about as the star of that team which may be a bit premature he's only got mm-hmm. um wore that number 10 perhaps. number 10 shirt and the last Spurs player to wear the number 10 for ireland did all right so <laughs> yeah so but, even robbie Keane made yeah, points saying yeah. to to not compare him to him yeah no they're, they're different no, the types. they are actually power. different they are yeah. different types of yeah, players well, he can play yeah. he can play in four different positions left wing right wing mm-hmm. center four in the hole I you think know. if we are yeah. talking about, and I think you touched on this uh, when we were chatting before the, the video, I think if there's any forward that we're looking at bolting into the squad, I think it might be Aaron Connolly. I, he's he's he scored in his debut in the League Cup, played uh, he got minutes against City before the international break. Hopefully, given their situation, I think they they loaned out Andone and. Yeah, he's, I think he's second choice striker behind yeah. Dan well, Murray. Well, if, get, if he's getting serious minutes in the Premier League, he, he I think he could be a bolter. Really, really, he's been actually been a little bit unlucky with injuries. He may have even come through before that. He played really, really well on Friday night. Yeah. Oh, he was um, excellent, and he was he played was, out of yeah. position as well. I don't think he's a left winger; he's a centre forward. Ah, oh, you know he plays on the he plays on the left wing quite. He played on the the left wing certainly in in Toulon as well. And he was just coming back from injury. Yeah. and uh, well, I think they they, they are trying really to well. accommodate yeah. Uh, the, either. Um, yeah, the forward line yeah. we have as well. But I think it's important not to go too off on the twenty ones here because okay. we are trying to the yeah, stick to on, the, to the to to much, yeah. it, it is a very good topic, um, but I do think that Troy maybe not ready, but two certainly twenty one players that in the future looking to come through. And you made a good point would be Malumbi and Connolly. But uh, I think that's it in terms of um, the game other than score prediction. I can uh, go this way. 2-0 two, two, two to Ireland. 2-0. Uh, goal scores? You don't have the to goal scores, I'll go for Scott Hogan. And that's giving away my team as well. And <laughs> I, 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 as I'm going to go with Jack Byrne sticking in a screamer for the oh, League of Ireland. Oh, I love that. It's <laughs> a nice show. Uh, I reckon Collins will play and I reckon he'll score uh, and I would see one of the midfield regulars playing and I think it might be so I think it might be Collins and Oran for a 2-0 win would be what I would I think. would go 2-0 as well Alan Brown to get one and I feel like Roman Curtis might get on the score sheet mm-hmm. okay. well, 2-0 all round I suppose right. yeah. I mean <laughs> Either way, either way, I'd like to see some new faces and uh, a positive result. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think the score prediction would be? What did you think of the 21s if you watched them as well, since we touched on it there? And um, are you going to the game? If not, tell us why in the comments. Let us know, uh, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out uh, John on um, the subreddit Orc Koi Big. And uh, check Gary out on Twitter at Spain Gary. Uh, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.